So why do we think healthcare will be the industry that benefits the most from AI? Well, there's a few things. One is what we call this leapfrog opportunity in healthcare AI. So the healthcare industry, as we know, has been a severe laggard in terms of the adoption of technology and software in particular. And, you know, really a huge portion of what we do in this industry is through manual labor, it's phone calls, it's fax, fax machines, it's paper. And, you know, we've historically viewed that as a huge liability, but we now think that that can be an asset. So why do we say that? Well, in this new era of AI, we as an industry don't have the same sunk cost bias that might be slowing other industries down from taking full advantage of the latest AI innovations. All these other industries have spent hundreds of billions of dollars on enterprise software apps and workflow tools over the last several decades, and they've trained their an entire generation of their workforce on those tools. And now they're really wringing their hands as they decide whether to rip those last generation tools out and effectively spend yet another hundred of billions of dollars on these modern AI tools that are now emerging. In healthcare, the question is simply, do I throw more bodies and fax machines at the problem? Um, particularly at a time when our industry is facing a huge workforce shortage, and we'll talk about that in a second, you know, or can I just j- jump directly to taking advantage of the benefits of AI without the baggage of the last generation workflow tools that my peers have in other industries? So that's that's one issue um, or one way to think about this. Um, and you know, related to the point that I just made, one of the primary existential crises of our healthcare system is that we don't have enough supply to meet the demand. Very simply put, you know, healthcare is dealing with the mother of all staffing crises. We're short, you know, roughly depending on what estimates you look at, hundreds of thousands of doctors and nurses relative to the level of demand that we have for clinical services in our population over the next several years. And when you think about it, you know, one of the scarcest assets that we have in healthcare is this notion of clinical judgment, which today only really exists in the form of human doctors and nurses. And so, you know, one of the most profound challenges that we face is how do we scale clinical judgment beyond the doctors that we have, beyond the four walls of the hospitals and the clinics that we have, and really make it accessible to all who need it when they need it. Relatedly, for the doctors and nurses that we do have in the system, how do we ensure that each one of them is actually performing at the same level of excellence and exceptional performance that uh, that the best of their peers in the world are operating at? And this is a problem set that AI is very uniquely qualified to solve. Um, None of this matters unless we have ways to evaluate and build trust in the AI products that doctors are using to make these really highly consequential decisions for us about our healthcare. So it's also great that we happen to be the one industry that actually has well-established regulatory rails for approving AI products for use in the real-world clinical setting. The FDA has already approved hundreds of clinical products for use in the wild um, that, that use AI. And they are also developing and have developed frameworks for upgrading those processes to address the latest innovations in machine learning and especially in generative AI as these products evolve. And so, you know, what that means is that the companies that um, are, are making it to market through these processes are the most clinically rigorous ones. They are the ones that have the most, um, you know, sort of airtight development methodologies that and so that yes that means that there's a higher barrier to entry for these companies but it also means that there is a much stronger moat for the ones that do make it through and then the last point i'll make here is you know the size of the prize when people talk about the opportunity for technology in healthcare everyone always talks about how big it is it's it's four trillion dollar plus industry it's growing faster than inflation huge portion of our gdp the reality of that $4 trillion, though, is that the vast majority of that spend is really services spend. It's human labor spend. It's not technology spend. And so per the earlier point that we made, it's been really hard for just pure software companies to really penetrate that total addressable market, that TAM, and capture much of the value in that overall pie. You know, estimates have that our industry has really only spent about 3% of its overall revenue um, on IT and technology products versus almost double that, at least double that in other industries. And so, you know, that's been the issue. Now, when you look at the AI tools, though, especially the generative AI tools, they are getting good enough that organizations are starting to view them almost as AI staff versus software. And in that sense, we're not just talking about disrupting the market of software, which let's call it is an order, you know, $10 billion market opportunity in healthcare today. We're really talking about disrupting the market of services, which is order trillions of dollars of opportunity. So in that sense, the scale of opportunity is at least an order of magnitude, if not more, larger than historical software opportunities when it comes to AI as a service. And that's really, I think, reflected in the quantum of capital that you see going into companies that are executing the strategy.
So whether you're building a challenger clinic, whether it's an infrastructure company that you're doing to you know, sort of rebuild the guts of how our healthcare system operates, or maybe it's a new type of payment model or a new type of insurance, we believe that there really has been no better time to start a company in this space than now, not the least because of the tectonic shift that these new AI capabilities represent in how your companies can be built, in terms of how they can be scaled, and in terms of how they can be brought to market.